everybody today I'm going to give a little insight into why it takes so long to grow your hair out and why the longer your hair grows the thinner it seems to become one girl uh, one hypothetical girl that I'm going to discuss in this video has an average hair growth rate of say half an inch per month or six inches per year um, so if she has an antigen phase of about four years, then uh, that's a pretty short antigen phase actually, but it makes my life easier when making graphs for this video, uh, which you'll see in a couple of minutes. So if her antigen phase is four years, then theoretically, if she starts with her hair very short, maybe one inch long or in a pixie cut or a buzz cut or something, then by simple math, in four years, her hair should be two feet long. And then, you know, theoretically, should it just stay there because that's her terminal length? Well, anybody who has tried to grow their hair out knows that it's not all that simple. So apart from having your hair damaged and break off, uh, apart from getting regular trims and at, uh, apart from times of stress and maybe not eating so well, so your antigen phase is temporarily shortened or your hair is growing slower than normal, you know, apart from all of that, there is a basic underlying temporal reason that your hair does not seem to grow as fast as maybe you think it should. Um, so even if you swear you have absolutely no damage to your hair, no breakage whatsoever, you don't trim your hair um, because you don't see any splits or anything, there's still a reason that the ends of your hair can seem a little thinner. So more than likely all the follicles on your head are all slightly in different points in their hair cycle. So at any given time about 85 to 90 percent of your hair is an antigen, that is it is actively growing. The other 10 to 15 percent are either in catagen or telogen, so the follicle is resting or it's not actively growing new hair basically. Um, so this is why you always have some hair on your head. So if you try to imagine what would happen if you magically synced up all of your hair follicles so that they all start antigen at the exact same time, and if you're careful about controlling the damage as you grow out your hair and all of that, then theoretically the ends of your hair should be just as thick as the roots of your hair. But then once all of your hair follicles reach telogen, all your hair would fall out at once and you'd be bald for a couple months before your uh, hair follicles start their cycle over again. So this doesn't happen with most people. Their hair growth phases are all scattered around your head. So when everything is working properly, you shouldn't have bald spots at any one time. So let's say that for this girl with the hypothetical four year antigen phase, I've sort of grouped her hair into categories based on how long ago those follicles had started their hair growth cycle. So at the very moment, you know, that very day that she just decides to grow her buzz cut or what have you, let's say that a certain percentage of her hair is just starting its antigen phase, you know, fresh new baby hair. That means that, you know, barring any damage due to the elements and not considering trims and all of that, theoretically those hairs should grow at her usual rate of half an inch per month and should not fall out until she reaches her goal in four years having hair 24 inches long. But now let's look at the certain percentage of her hair that has already been growing for the last six months. So even though it's the same length as the last group of hair that we looked at, because you know she had buzzed it all short at the same time, the time left and in this category's antigen phase is going to be shorter. It's gonna be only three and a half years. Remember, it, her full antigen length for all of her follicles is still about four years, just like with the last group, you know? But this time, it's already been growing for six months. So six months of that four-year antigen phase has already passed. And this is kind of tricky to explain, but hopefully you guys are following me. Um, so let's look at what this graph looks like. This group of hair starts out short, just like with the last one, and it grows for three and a half years, reaching a length of about 20 inches within that time, because it's still growing at half an inch per month. So at that point, the hair reaches the end of its cycle and it's in its rest phase, it's in telogen for a couple of months, and then it starts growing a new baby hair. Now this in the graph should probably be a broken line, not continuous because it's not like the hair is shrinking or anything, it's actually a new one growing in and the old one had fallen out. But basically what all this means is that for all your work over those years, this group of hair is only three inches long at the end of those four years of growth because it had been growing, but then it fell out and then a new shorter hair started to grow. So now let's look at the certain percentage of hair that has already been an antigen phase for a full year on day zero, you know, when she decides that she's not gonna cut her hair anymore. So remember, this follicle's full antigen phase is four years long, but as of this day that she decides not to cut it anymore, there's only three years left of its cycle. So over those three years, this hair will grow and probably about 17 inches if it's the same rate of half an inch per month, and then it'll fall out and a new baby hair will start to grow in its place. So by the end of the four years of hair growth, these hairs will only be about six inches long. 
So I've done this for the percentage of hair that's been in antigen phase for one and a half years, for two years, for two and a half years, and so on, um, already on the day that this girl decides to grow out her hair. So in reality, you lose between 50 and 100 hairs a day. This is completely normal. Um, so your hair isn't sectioned into six month intervals like how I uh, organized it here, but basically putting it into these groups makes the graph simpler to understand and help to get the concepts across for you better. Um, so when I superimpose all this data, you can see that even if she has zero damage or breakage, her hair is going to be naturally feathered and layered and all, all at different lengths. So let me draw a head right here to kind of reflect what exactly this graph means, her hair length. Um, so only perhaps 10 to 15% of her hair is going to be at her terminal length, that being 24 inches, at any given time. Now, many people see a person who's growing out their hair very long and, you know, th this person is approaching their terminal length and their hair looks fuzzy or fluffy and the ends look very thin. This is a big reason why. Thin ends or fairy tale ends, you know, they might be a sign of damage or breakage. I'm not denying that. But a big part of it is just because the way the follicle schedules are scattered, uh, you know, where they are in the, in the hair cycle. And... Some hairs may grow faster or slower than others. You know, this is just the way that hair grows. Biology is not a totally cut and dry process. Now, a lot of girls, they want thicker ends. They want a more blunt cut because it looks healthier to them. So let's say that, you know, our hypothetical girl maintains her hair at 20 inches, not 24 inches. Um, so she, she keeps it at 20 inches by trimming half an inch every month in hopes that her hair is going to become thicker. So you can see that in this table, I've gone up to eight years of growing out her hair and still only about 20 or maybe 25% of her hair is going to be at the longest point, 20 inches at any one point. Now, if you think about 100,000 follicles on your head, this means that about 25,000 follicles will still be at the longest point, which is still quite a lot, but it's still only going to be about a quarter of the thickness as the hair at her scalp. And if this hypothetical girl had kept her hair at 18 inches or even 16 inches, then the ends of her hair would be even thicker. So I'm willing to say that probably most people in the world have an antigen phase much longer than just four years. My antigen phase, I estimate to be probably around eight or ten years I've been able to grow my hair a little bit past my knees you know to the top of my calves um, so I know that my terminal length is at least that long but at the moment my hair is about a foot shorter than that because my ends looked very thin at that length yes obviously I had some damage I had some split ends and whatnot but when I keep my hair a little bit shorter than my terminal length it looks so much thicker for the reasons that I explained in this video so I hope this helps some of you understand why the ends of your hair loses its thickness as you grow it out and why it often takes much longer than just, you know, the, the equivalent of one antigen cycle to achieve both long and thick hair. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, you need any clarification, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll see you in a couple days for the next video. Bye guys.